expenditures, $430,607.20. So our year-to-date for revenue collected is $5,188,748.54. Total expenditures year-to-date is $4,251,000. $737.30. General funding income tax for the month of, actually through October 31st, last month, $78,038.63 in the general fund. We received it for the police income tax levy, $39,019.32. For a total year to date collected for the general fund of $870,673.75. And for the police half percent income tax, it receded year to date $433,000. $556.13. The uh, year-to-date collections through November does amount to 95% of what we estimated that we'd be uh, receiving, and our year-to-date expenditures are at 69% of what we are allowed to spend. So we still are watching our revenue and our receipts very closely. If there's anything I can answer any questions, I'd be glad to. that we worked on on the last meeting. So that's what that number is. It's a housekeeping, bookkeeping, in and out booking. Thank you. 
citizens and future council. Um, in the month of November, the New Kalal Fire Division responded to 73 MS calls in the city and five in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to six fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had three MS calls answered by Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to uh, Medic 52 already being on a response. We answered two uh, mutually re MS calls to Pike Township and two to Bethel Clark. In the month of November, the division also responded to two overdose calls. Um, and I, this is not in the report, but didn't get finished out until today. Uh, as of right now, we are on target with everything with the March radio system to switch over on January 1st. All the radios are in, tuned, programmed, installed in the apparatus. All the handhelds are up and running and programmed and already did some test tones for the, uh, for the station. And we should be with any problems swapping over probably around 10 a.m. on the first. Um, and from the fire division and myself, would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. tools since we put it into effect in April we've used it seven times and we have a four out of seven uh, saves with it. Yes we would like to buy a second one for the reason of putting it either on the backup medic or put it on the battalion vehicle that way if medic 52 is out on a normal medic run and, and uh, transported to the hospital, it would still leave a Lucas tool in, in the city that if we get a second run and it's a cardiac arrest, the battalion officer or someone that picked up that, that second medic, medic unit would still have that Lucas tool available to them. And it's also been, re we've been requested mutual aid twice now and a uh, Lucas tool has been used twice mutual aid. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Chief, what are the uh, possibilities of donations in order to bring us to purchase the 
they're always out there. We put it in grants continuously. We've already we've already started our grant writing process for next year. Um, one with the Marks Radio Equipment Grant, one for the Marks Radio Grant. Uh, we'll also put in for the Fire Chiefs Grant, and we also get a um, usually get a thirty-two hundred dollar EMS grant. Yes, we, we need to look at a new engine, um, but right now we're still paying for the ladder truck, and I don't feel that we can cope with that type of another payment along top of the ladder truck. Um, but yes, we are. How long do we have to lay the ladder truck? Three years. And that was the balloon payment we financed just to refresh everyone's memory. Remember that? That's my other piece guys that wanted the balloon payment so that's and that's done in three years i thought it was two and a half three fun it's two, yeah, it's two years two and a half to three years yeah. um what we're looking at is as soon as that's paid off go ahead and already have a new engine specced out at that time uh that way we can push forward right with it and basically the over thing of already used to paying that money out every month so it would flop over to the engine payment because uh, right now as of january 1 our front run pumper will become 20 years old Not as much as I am. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Council, any other questions, comments? Thank you, Chief. Appreciate the report. And moving on with the city manager's report, Mr. Mayor, is that okay to go for this? Yes, sir. Great, thank you. Um, police discussion. Um, our, our police administrator may be at the city building trying to apprehend a certain individual. So um, I did call him when me and Ms. Harris had saw the individual in the parking lot of these called Ms. Harris at the building we in. We were coming to him over here and there's a lady with a flashlight looking in city building, looking in cars. Oh. And Colleen had confronted her and then I had called Sergeant Underwood. So he is probably taking care of that. Um, so hopefully he'll arrive shortly. Um, maybe when he gets in he can do his report at that point in time because I don't have it with me. He can just hand them out. Um, so that being said, we'll move on to informational items. Uh, update at our city parks. I'm happy to report that the ribbon cutting ceremony uh, did take place. It was on a Friday. Um, there was a great turnout. We had probably about 15, 20 people there. Councilman Lepley was there on behalf of the city council. So thank you so much for attending. Um, so the baby swings are, are, are now, are they open now? They have to sit for a little bit. No, they're, they're good to go. So they are good to go. So if we do have a random nice day in the winter and you want to take your kid to experience that baby swing, you're more than welcome to get on them now. So please take advantage of those. Uh, that is something the city has lacked for quite some time. And I'm glad we finally got those in place at Smith and Willowood Park. Thank you. Um, and then water superintendent resignation. We got some two bullet points here that are, are not really good news. Um, Jason Rose, our water superintendent, did put his resignation in. Um, Jason will be going to the village of Enon. Um, so we did um, place the ad and, uh, on Otco's website. Um, so we will definitely move forward with hiring a replacement. We've also had to, per the union agreement, uh, per, per, excuse me, per union agreement, had to internally post that as well. So I am inserting, assuming that we will get some internal candidates as well as uh, some external candidates as well. We'll definitely keep council posted as the progress of to who we should hire to go in that position. And moving on, uh, Mr. Gene Collier, his resignation is attached. Um, um, this one I, I did not see coming as well. So, um, Mr. Mayor, do you want me to read his resignation uh, out? Okay. Uh, it's addressed. It's, it's totally up to council if you want it for the minutes. I'll go ahead and read it. All right, great. It says, effective December 31st, 2017, I will be resigning as clerk of council for the city of New Carlisle. Recently, my new job responsibilities with the Northwestern School District have made it very difficult at times for me to attend council meetings over the last year. As a result, I feel it's time for me to move on and allow someone else the opportunity to be clerk of council. 
I would like to thank each council member for, for affording me this opportunity over the last four years. I have thoroughly enjoyed my experience with council and in keeping in touch with what is occurring in New Carlisle. I'd also like to express my pleasure in working with Mr. Bridge and the city administration. They are the best and most professional administration that I personally worked with in the last 20 plus years of my involvement with the city. As a result, I will not be able to attend a December 18th meeting due to an obligation with my job responsibilities. However, I will complete the minutes of the December 18th meeting to be available for council at the first meeting, January 2nd, 2018. I will also make myself readily available in January to assist in the training of a new clerk as selected by the new 2018 council. I feel this is the appropriate time to separate and allow the new council to select a clerk of their choice for coming years. But once again, thank you so much for your support and consideration over the last four years. So that's an unfortunate um, email to get. Um, I have discussed with the New Carlisle News getting an ad in the paper. I will also put one in the Springfield News Sun um, so we can maybe get it in Springfield and the Dayton paper. Um, this is going to be, I don't know how historically has it been to set, to, to appoint a new clerk of council. I mean, you're looking at two specialized skill sets to know something about government, and then you have to know something about actually typewriting. Would council be willing to maybe kind of think outside the box with this? If we can't find anyone with that great skill set as far as knowledge of our charter and how we're supposed to do things, as well as typing the minutes, because the most attractive point of this job is sitting at your home typing the minutes. Would council be willing to find someone just to sit here? Maybe we can outsource the typing of the minutes. I have a company that will do it for a dollar a minute, and they can just take it right from YouTube. <coughs> and that decision, I think, should be called off until after the first of the year. Um, now, with that being said, um, I don't know how long it's going to get someone to get sat for this job. So, um, and. The big part of that job is typing up the minutes. Just for software out there that convert on like dragon software and stuff like that, yeah. Now there's a type of our text message from me when I use here. It doesn't go well sometimes. It's a problem. Yeah. I guess I guess we do six clicks, so this is going to have to play the audience a lot. Well, the ad knife sent out to the new Carlisle News today, and he's going to try to get it in for Wednesday's paper. I did send it to him way past the 12 o'clock deadline. I think I put the deadline on December 31st to receive applications. And once I get the applications, I'm forwarding to council because it's that's your guys' appointment, not ours. I'll definitely be that middleman to facilitate passing up the residents, but I mean we're under the gun here to get a get a, get a new person trained and sat. Correct. Mr. Reynolds, do, do you still have the formal application? Did they even uh, did they even publish it last time or did yeah, they just the kind of people Oh, there were a few. Oh, that's that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I was the Chamber of Commerce to be right. So fine. Christy Smith and everyone Well we should still have that information somewhere. Should be January 2nd, not January 3rd, correct? Uh, 2018. And 2018 operating budget work sessions, we will need to begin to schedule those in early 18. So I'm assuming once the new council is set, we can go ahead and start getting availability to have go into our work sessions for the 2018 operating budget. And I do believe that is all I have uh, for the city manager's report, so I would be happy to entertain any questions or comments. Any questions? Uh, Angela Dunn? Yes. Fantastic. She has, um, I 
think, really risen to the occasion. Uh, she was lacking some skill sets, primarily with our software system that we use. I've been checking up with Ms. Harris periodically about her progress. Ms. She, Ms. Harris is direct report. Do you have anything you'd like to say about Ms. Gump? She has the best rapport with the customers. We're talking about personnel. Oh, yeah, but it's a new hire. Oh. Yeah. We shouldn't be doing this in a concession. Okay, we will have to stop. Yes. And that falls under that you can't talk about police performance. All right, moving on to comments from the members of the public. If anybody has a question, please comment. We can possess you guys at the podium. Say your name and address if you do have a question or comment. Thank you very much. Moving on. Committee reports are not denied. We'll drop down to our solutions. Resolution 17 19 R. city is wanting to purchase. What we'll do with this capital program is once this is approved, this is our first step in moving on to talking about our 2018 operating budget. So what we'll do is after this is approved tonight, we'll take this and bring it with us when we start talking about the 2018 operating budget and we can uh, amend it, add to it after that. Um, but this again, this is the first step that we have to get to to, get to talk about our operating budget. city will pay. Um, we will only be charged for the deputy pay grade that we use. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions, comments? Are you ready, Mr. Kicker? Mm -hmm. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Whitey? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Leslie? Yes. Mr. Craybocker? <clears throat> Mayor Lowry? Yes. And Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Ordinance 17 Thank you. 
for the Ohio Pooled Collateral Program. And an explanation of this ordinance. Public funds are not FDIC insured. So uh, what the bank has to do is set aside an amount equal to uh, the money that is pooled. So that it would be insured in case of bank loss. Is that correct? Yes.
have the Excel data here to plug in the rates they had su su suggested off of the two. One of the, we produced four scenarios, and they wanted to, they chose to hybrid two scenarios together. So we did not have the Excel document here to plug those numbers in. The next morning we went and plugged them in. The rates are not changing. That's all the same. It's just the repayment terms of when it gets paid to the general fund, and then also when the actual new dates start. So 
is the fire chief has done a great job of collecting data. And I wanted to throw that data into an Excel sheet so it's easier to compare what other people get paid. And we can clearly see the average pay for basic across in our immediate region, and I will stress immediate region, is $12.70. We currently pay our basics eleven forty two. dollars The advanced average pay is $13.44. We pay $11.75. The medic pay is $15.12 average across the board. We pay $12.69. So when you look at the rates that we pay, if you're a young guy or seasoned experience, you're obviously going to go where the money is at. Um, and I think that we've also seen a lot of these private ambulance companies come into play these past four years, I don't know, five years, that have really upped the average pay, what people get paid. I mean, if you work for a private company, you're probably going to get paid more than what you do if you work for a uh, local uh, small department. So underneath that graph there is also a basic, advanced, and medic cumulative total, and those are just estimates based off averages, about how much of a payroll we would have to increase to be competitive to serve. Real quick, I mean, I've got the idea on the but can you just clarify basic and advanced? Do you, do you want to take that? Basic, <clears throat> a basic is a firefighter, at least firefighter level one, and a basic EMT. A fire, uh, an intermediate or advanced is a basic firefighter level one and an intermediate EMT. They're in between basic EMT and paramedic. They're allowed to start IV lines. They're allowed to give certain drugs up to um, and not including cardiac drugs. And then a paramedic, of course, is at least a level one and paramedic that can give all drugs, including cardiac drugs, and can do all the fancy stuff like chest decompressions and all that good stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. So the cumulative uh, average across the board, if we were going to be competitive, would add about 95000 of payroll onto the current budget. And then we get into the massive, the big capital purchases that's going to have to be made uh, over the course of the next five years, two years. What is that? When the medic goes the medic is The medic is like three needed in. now, and then the engine within three years. Okay. So we look at the new medic. Uh, fire chief has the interest rate on the new fire engine is just an estimate. Um, he has contacted the bank because that's a pretty good estimate. He just didn't make it up himself. About four hundred thousand dollars cost for a new fire engine at four percent for the fifteen-year term would be about two thousand nine hundred seventy-seven monthly. And times that by twelve would be about thirty-six thousand dollars yearly. Then we can see the medic cost below, uh, 225,000, 3.2% interest rate. And that interest rate is solid, correct? It, it just go, about it. As long as, we do, as long as we purchase this year. Sure. Is this year 17 or this year 18? 18. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the interest rate on that would be 3.24, 10 years, monthly payment $2,203, yearly $26,436. Um, I've also included the projected 2018 fund balances for our uh, uh, ambulance and uh, fire. These fund balances can be found in your 2018 tax budget that was recently passed. So when you're looking at those boards, it's clearly time to do something. Um, we have discussed really what our options are as far as administrative and really to cut, you're going to have to cut wages and basically not go from, you're going to have to go to a part-time department. And I don't think anyone in the city or anyone in this room wants that, you know? So I think this is the route that we need to take, you know? Um, council approves the legislation and then you let your voters decide on that. Um, I don't know how much discussion what was is going to need to take place tonight. However, we are under a, you didn't say something? Okay. We are under a time frame. We have a deadline of February 7th to get everything to them. So what I'm proposing is that this get it, it introduced tonight and it will be voted on at the next council's first meeting in January. And this is what we call a, a resolution. It's an ordinance in our form, but it really it's a resolution.
resolution of necessity. We need to declare our necessity. It's step one of two of state law that says this is what you have to do. Ballot initiative on the ballot. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Council to introduce legislation. Second.
city, purchasing one new medic and purchasing a new engine in three years would put us where we need to be. We, there's no reason to look at buying another medic. Um, because the plan is if we buy a new medic this year, our medic right now that's six years old has over 130,000 miles on it already due to our transport distances. If we buy a new medic this year, it will still be a, will, will allow us to be capable of taking those medics and rotating them every 90 days, and that will cut down the mileage on both of those medics and the wear and tear on both medics. And don't we have two medics right now? Yes, sir, we do. And that med, the, the, our reserve medic right now is the oldest Ford, the Ford medic, and it's pretty much, it's, it, it's in service, but, and we would probably look to, after we purchase a new medic, to sell that medic. The possibility, the possibility would not be there to keep it in case one of the medics went out of service for whatever reason? If one of them runs out of service, you just, we could, but to me, it's, it's why waste the insurance and the maintenance on, the, on that medic? And we don't really need to, because if one of the medics goes down, you have your reserve medic. Thank you. Now, if we if we had the money to put dual crews on, or I had a crew on each medic, then yes, we would. To follow up on the wages, will this also get us compatible? It will get us. It will. It will. Everybody else. It will get us competitive. Competitive with our surrounding area. Would that also include these private ambulance services or not? Not. To a certain extent, but you have to understand that when you look at a private ambulance service compared to what we are, a private ambulance service can hire EMS only personnel. I can't. I have to hire dual certified fire and EMS. There's a lot of people out there. I'll write a medic, but I, I don't want to go fight fire. I'm just that's the way it is. Um, it'll make us competitive to a certain extent, but if you've got somebody that just doesn't want to be a fireman, all they want to do is drive a medic. That's where they're going to go. Is we don't we lose people in one sense, but what hurts us more is when those people get selected for those positions with the private enemy service, it takes away their availability for hours to us. Uh, our system works on a four-week cycle. Each person puts in their availability for the next four weeks. Then our uh, scheduling captain, Captain Rim, takes that availability and fills those holes with what availability that they have. So these people that are go to these to the uh, private ambulance services, um, like Buckeye, Buckeye's worked out where they're actually doing we're doing 24 on 48 hour, hour off shifts. Um, and then you have AMR that has umpteen different different schedules that they run. It's just I, I don't even know how they do it because it's, it's confusing to me. But that takes away from that person's availability what they can give us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, the chief, when we were in our last joint meeting, uh, about the time the chief was talking about uh, the, the cost of replacing equipment, uh, uniforms, not uniforms, but fire uniforms, uh, and uh, the masks and those things that were getting outdated, even though they're only allowed to use them so many years, even though they're brand new, they, they, they stuck for a while. Uh, right now, are we going to run into that problem? And is this well, when I first when I first took over fire chief, we were in that situation. I had nothing in well, what we call I had nothing in the hole. I had no gear in the hole to issue people. Um, fire gear is good for ten years. Period. It can look brand new, you know, because it's it, common sense. A set of gear in New Carlisle is going to last longer than a set of gear in the city of Dayton. Okay, but in, in FPA standard state that at 10 years that gear is no longer uh, usable. Um, so what I, we bought a lot of gear that first year and then I implemented uh, buying five sets of gear every year so that way we have that rotation available um, because my next year that we will lose a lot of the gear will be 2019 and so I've been buying five sets of gear every year since then uh, to recover that. And you're right, the price of the gear, I just matter to have my quotes for this upcoming year. Um, <laughs> a helmet is $200. $51. A coat is 
$999. Pants is $709. Gloves are $63. You know, and so it basically, it, it costs me anywhere from $2,500 to $3,000 to outfit one firefighter. And then, so the question was, is this going to this will hit, yeah. Yes, this will. We've already we've already put things in place to help that. Um, and one thing we did too is we went away from buying form fit gear. In other words, taking a firefighter and having tailor cut for his gear. We went to buying stock gear, which is the same gear. It's the same NFPA code, but it's not form fit. It's like small, medium, or large, and which works just as well. And but a lot less cost. So we went into that, which has helped us tremendously. But yes, the answer quick, yes, that will, we will we will stay at where we need to be with that. Chief, just one question. This is probably all heard when it comes to the center, but what kind of a life expectancy from here on out can we expect on a ladder truck? Our ladder truck, our ladder truck right now is, is in excellent condition. Uh, it gets tested once a year, just like every other apparatus. The uh, pumps get tested once a year. The air ladder itself gets tested once a year. Um, the ground ladders get tested, all that. Um, now, I, since taking over, I have implemented a maintenance program to where we have every apparatus in the division has a bumper-to-bumper -bumper safety PM maintenance done at the beginning of the year through apparatus repair. And then they give us a list of this is what's major, this can wait. And we've been doing that for the past year and a half. Um, but the ladder truck itself right now is in, is in excellent condition. Again, again, in variables, ladder truck in the city of New Carlisle versus a ladder truck in the city of Dayton, big difference. Uh, it, sh it should last us for another 10, 15 years you know, at the most. What you have to look at with the apparatus, though, is the biggest thing is what NPA says you can do. The same way with the bunker gear. And if PA says at 20 years, a piece of apparatus is not supposed to be a front run response pumper. And FPA states that at 20 years, at 20 years old, a apparatus should not be used as a front run pumper. Okay. Well, because what it is, bunker gear can be washed and can be dried, and it's washed in a bunker gear washing machine. It extracts everything out of it that, that needs to be, and is commercially dried. Uh, the face pieces can be sanitized, but what we've done this year with the grant money that we received, we received an NS, uh, NFP, um, SCBA grant. We took that grant and bought every firefighter has their own personal face piece to where they are responsible for cleaning it, they're responsible for sanitizing it, and we buy the sanitizing cleaning that they spray it with. Um, and say someone leaves, that mask is then is taken and completely broken down and sanitized and sprayed and cleaned before it's issued out to someone else. Because um, that's a big health issue. It really is. Uh, but as far as the bunker gear, about the only thing that we wouldn't roll over, maybe um, maybe the, the Nomex hoods that we wear, or what you see race car drivers wear, um, because that's becoming one of the big hot top topics in the fire service right now is cancer age, uh, cancer causing. The Nomex hoods are been known now that they collect all of that cancer inside of a fire, all the carcinogens, and the firefighters are soaking it into their skin. So we developed a process now that we're, after any structure fire, those hoods are washed, and that's another thing we're purchasing this year is a stockpile of hoods, so that way they can swap out. Um, and another big trend right now with the fire service, the fire service is going down. Just plain so people don't want to be firemen anymore. The glory days of 9-11, every fire department in the United States on the, that year of 9-11 should have put in levies. They would have gotten them. The big thrill of being a fireman and all that is gone. I'm just being honest. Uh, when you look at the trend of even the paid fire departments, uh, Fairborn had a hiring for five people, usually five people, they get 250 people to apply. They had 30 people apply. All right, thank you, Chief Council. Any other questions from Chief and Mr. Bridge? All right. Mr. Mayor, can I say something real quick, please? 
Yes, sir. If I gave you a council packet and you have a black cliff kind of back. <laughs> Just a very brief update on that. 